Well, the Omicron variant developments come on the heels of the U.S. passing 800,000 deaths from COVID-19. And the country begins days of holiday gatherings and travel. National correspondent Marisa Giorgio live from Missoula, Montana, to tell us more about this recent COVID surge that we're seeing and how we can avoid another lockdown. Good morning, Marisa. What are you saying? And good morning, Alex. We're starting to see pretty substantial clusters now being blamed on Omicron. Across the pond, the UK continues to see a dramatic rise in Omicron cases, doubling less than every two days. And new this morning, France is putting a halt on travel to and from Britain. If what's happening in the UK is any indication, we're in for a triple whammy of Omicron, Delta and the flu with holiday travel mixed in. New warnings as we learn more about the Omicron variant and its predicted battle with Delta just before Christmas. Early data suggests that Omicron is more transmissible than Delta with a doubling time of about two days. We are watching a war right now between the Delta variant and the Omicron variant as to who's going to become the king of the viral hill. And I think uh, right now Omicron's transmission potential means that it probably will win. White House officials say we have the tools to fight the variant and avoid another lockdown. We now have vaccines for 95% of Americans. Um, we know how to keep our kids in school and our businesses open. And we're not going to shut down our economy in any way. We're going to keep our schools and our businesses open. The U.S. now shows a sharp increase in Omicron cases, making up 3% of the country's total COVID-19 cases, but more than 13% in places like New York and New Jersey. And health experts say these are likely underestimates based on how fast Omicron is moving. It is vital for everyone to get vaccinated and boosted if they are eligible. Given the increase in transmissibility, this also means continuing to be vigilant about masking in public indoor settings in areas of substantial or high community transmission. Right now, Walensky says about 90% of U.S. counties fit the definition of having high community transmission. A handful of U.S. universities started moving to remote for finals week. In New York, Cornell University reported more than 900 cases in the last week. The university's president told students there was evidence of Omicron in a significant number of samples where 98% of the campus is vaccinated. The Omicron variant undoubtedly compromises the effects of a two-dose mRNA vaccine-induced antibodies and reduces the overall protection. In pro sports, the NFL saw its worst two-day outbreak since the start of the pandemic, with ESPN reporting 75 players who have tested positive in the last few days. The NBA and NHL are also postponing games. The surge isn't surprising health experts. If you look across the pond, England recorded its highest daily COVID-19 case number ever Wednesday, adding more than 4,000 Omicron cases to the tally. I'm afraid we're also seeing the inevitable increase in hospitalizations up by 10% nationally week on week and up by almost a third in London. Johnson says a sign of hope is the huge amount of people lining up for booster doses. Dr. Anthony Fauci again stressed the need for those shots in the U.S., saying they replace the need for an Omicron-specific vaccine at this time. If we didn't have these tools, I would be telling you to really, really be worried. But health experts agree if you're unvaccinated or unboosted, you're more vulnerable not only to Delta, but now Omicron. And the White House says in the first two weeks of December, the U.S. administered 14 million booster shots, which is the highest ever two-week total. And later this afternoon, a CDC advisory panel will meet to discuss and vote on updated recommendations for the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. That's in light of the rates of a rare blood clotting disorder linked to that shot. All right, National Correspondent Maritza Giorgio reporting live for us in Montana. Thank you.